guys, welcome back to Fairy Fox Design. I'm Laura and I'm excited to be with you today. I asked you guys recently, what is it that you want to learn from me? I was overwhelmed by the response. Thank you guys so much for being here, sharing time with me and being interested in what I might have to say. I really am excited about the chance to sell, share more than just designs with you. I'm calling these new videos coffee chats because I find it a whole lot easier to be comfortable and calm when I feel like I'm with a friend. So this first one is here in my studio. You can get a drink and I see I have my nice little hot chocolate um, and we can visit together about these awesome uh, face painting things. So if you were here and you were going to be one of my apprentices, this is kind of what we would do. We would sit together and I would teach you how to be an amazing face painter. And I got a question that was about how to keep kids from wiggling. <laughs> Whenever I see a little kid, like a little, little kid, I feel like uh, challenge accepted. <laughs> I've got 15 different things in order to keep kids still. So let's get started. The first one is that I want you to prep your canvas. I find that kids are a lot more wiggly if I'm constantly bouncing around trying to avoid, you know, the ketchup here and the cotton candy there. So I often have wet wipes, but I do not wash kids' faces. I feel like I have to do that enough in my personal life. So I will hand the parent a wet wipe, but I do always twist the bangs back. Even if it's a simple cheek design, I feel like I don't wanna dodge bangs. I don't wanna deal with glasses. So prep your canvas. Anybody working on canvas, they know what that means. You got to put on your gesso, you got to, you know, so take the time uh, before you even start. And that will really help not have to take as long of a time. So the biggest way to be able to sh deal with wiggles is to have a shorter painting. Um, but we'll do speed painting in another video. But so that's my first one. Prep the canvas. Step two is that you want to accept that there are going to be wiggles. This is a little kid, they're going to wiggle, but wiggles come in different levels. So we have, you know, low, medium, and high wiggles. <laughs> so they can be as wiggly as they want to be whenever you're loading your paint, or they can be as wiggly as they want to be whenever you're talking to the parent about something or whatever. Um, medium wiggles are fine. If you're just laying down a base color and they're kind of looking around a little, I wouldn't be like, oh, hold still because they're going to be wiggly. But you have those moments where you're doing the unicorn's eyelashes that you need perfectly still. And so during those moments, it's okay to be like, hey, I need you to be still right now. But I kind of think of it as like a rule of three. I can ask the kids for perfect stillness three times. So I'm not going to waste one of my times earlier on. Step three is that you want to remove distractions. Often those distractions come in the form of parents. <laughs> so you're like, hey, okay, I'm I want you to hold still. And mom and dad are like, oh, look over here for a picture or hold still. She said, hold still. And the kid's like, what? To mom and dad. And that drives me crazy. Um, so you want to be able to be like, if they just got one of those little bubble guns or those little kind of guns, um, be like, here, we're going to let daddy hold that for a minute. And you know, dad's been dying to hold it anyway. So, you know, whatever you can do, try and remove as many distractions as you can. In my tent, it's often kind of simple because I also don't want the distractions to be something that I have provided. Next, we're gonna set our stage. Now this might sound funny, but again, we're trying to be quick for the kids to not be too wiggly and we're asking them to do something hard. Kids like to move. So to ask a kid, hey, I want you to hold still, that's not very easy. So do your part and be organized. Have your kit laid out really well so you don't spend 10 seconds or 20 seconds looking for that paintbrush or looking for the glitter because those are 10 or 20 seconds the kid is having to sit still and that's not very easy. So you want to do what you can to be prepared so that the time that they have to be still is as short as possible. Step five, um, or idea five, these aren't really steps, um, is to be able to use positive language. Instead of saying, don't move, although no te mueves is one of the only things I can say in Spanish. <laughs> you don't really want to be negative. You don't want to be like, hey, I told you to sit still. Go ahead and calm yourself down and be like, hey, you're doing so good. I see that your hands are still and that your knees are still, but can you have your toes be still for me? You know, or whatever it is, go ahead and give them a compliment and let them know they're doing good, but you need them to do better. <laughs> that kind of thing can really make a difference in the overall feeling in your booth and it can help them sit still which is again, keeping the wiggles away. Idea number six. Now this one's kind of controversial and I'm still trying to figure out a way for you guys to like trust me enough for me to say these kinds of things, but um, it's stranger danger. 
kids don't know who I am, at, at least until I painted their face six and seven times. Um, and that can be used to your advantage. Instead of trying to get the kids to be your best buddies and high fives and slaps and hugs, I mean, sometimes that comes after I'm finished, but before especially if it's a little wiggly kid, I let them be a little nervous around me. Now, I don't want to be scary. I try and make sure that I'm wearing really comfy clothes and that I look like a mom instead of, you know, some super freaky artistic person. No, 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 no. I want the kids to be comfortable, but I do want them to be a little bit um, ner <sighs> nervous is the wrong word, but I want them to be a little cautious because cautious kids are still kids. Uh, idea number seven. Give them something to do, okay? Um, when you just say, don't think about purple unicorns, what are we all thinking about purple unicorns? So instead of saying, don't wiggle, don't wiggle, don't wiggle, give them something to do. Some ideas are give them something to hold. You can say, oh, help me. I can't remember what color is a green dinosaur or whatever, you know, give them something to think about, to focus on. Some of the other things I do, um, if it's a little kid last ditch, I'll let them look in the mirror. But I feel like that one has like a 15 second interest rate. So that is, again, last ditch. Um, often, if it's a little kid, I'll tell them a story or I'll sing a little song, or I'll do my ABCs, and something, because if you give them something to focus on, a focused kid is a still kid. Now, number eight, uh, the littles, okay? We have these little, little kids. Now, there are people that just say under two, no. Um, an easy way to do it is you have to be old enough to tell me what you want yourself. Um, and so that can get you away from the nine month old that needs a full face Spider-Man. Uh, I avoid those <laughs> if I can, um, but I do really like to paint the little kids. Um, so here's some things to think about when you're painting a very little kid. Oh, and I have something to show you about this. <laughs> okay, so this is my little kid, okay? I didn't want to bring an actual little kid because I'm not painting a face and I felt like that would be a jippy way, but okay, so uh, very wiggly. King Kong right here. Okay, so I'm going to show you a couple of the things that I do. So um, first of all, put them on a parent's lap because if they're sitting on a lap, they're a lot more comfortable and they're not going to do the nervous wiggles. Um, but what I like to do, I take my hand and I put it on the side of their face. And then as I'm painting over here and I'm pushing in, um, how many times have you seen a parent say, you're such a good little kid? I mean, you are asking them to focus right here. Now on a bigger kid, this would not work because they have learned a certain independence. But on a very little kid, um, they are so uh, uh, dependent on parents and on teachers and, and all of those things that they can be nervous when they're being asked to do too much on their own. And so by giving them a place to go and just putting your hand against their cheek, and now I'm not pushing or anything, but I'm just saying, okay, lean right here. And then they've been given a task, they know how to do that. And then you have something to paint. And if they're going to move or they're going to wiggle, you're going to have a heads up about that. And you're going to be able to pull your brush away before they've moved too much. But another thing to do, and this is really weird to do with King Kong, but here we go, um, is if I am the parent and face painters over here, um, I'll often say, okay, we're going to take a nap. And you have them lay against their parent's shoulder. And then that gives you the cheek available as well. And this can even work really nicely if you're doing the forehead or anything bigger. The next one is something that I'm sure all of you are already using, but um, it's closing the eyes. So again, if we take down the distractions, the easiest way to get rid of visual distractions is just boop, they're gone. Um, so asking a kid to close their eyes. And then um, I often won't tell them when they can open. Uh, sometimes they'll ask me two minutes in, hey, can I open my eyes now? And I'll be like, oh yeah. <laughs> but uh, go ahead and, and have their eyes closed. Number 10, fuel their investment. So um, for like the three, four, five-year-old, uh, when they're doing something mommy wants or they're doing something daddy wants, they're like half on board. But if this is something that they are really focused on, then um, they'll often sit more still. So ask them, you know, follow up questions, get details, be like, oh, what do you think? You know, and again, this is asking them to talk. So if you want them to be quiet, this won't work. But um, what do you think your hippo had for lunch today? You know, and things in, and be like, oh, okay, well, I I want it to have purple on it or whatever. Um, we like, what color of purple? Light purple or dark purple? Now, this isn't choosing what color you're going to use. This is just having them thinking and focused and invested because if they're invested in the outcome, they will probably help you by sitting still. Number 11 is really nice, um, and that's just being honest. Being able to say, hey, the more still you hold, the better I can do, or the faster I can go, or different things. And it's being able to say, um, we are creating this together. 
I'm in this and you're in this and I would love your help. You know, that kind of thing. My idea number 12 for you today is to lower your expectations. Okay. <laughs> there are those kids that are really wiggly and they're just going to wiggle. And that angry bird is not going to look like an angry bird should look. It looks more like a Tweety bird or something, you know, and you're like, ah, oh, <laughs> it's a really happy angry bird. Who meant for that? No, of course not. Um, but it's okay. Accept defeat. Um, sometimes you will be defeated. Um, and sometimes you will be a rock star and it will be amazing that anybody got something on that wiggly kid. And you have to be able to be like, oh my gosh, you did a good job. And really those ultra wiggles are some of my biggest tips because parents are like, oh, Thank you so much. You did such an amazing job with that. So tip 13, be calm, <laughs> okay? Now this is really hard because a wiggly kid is kind of pushing the stress button on a face painter, right? Um, and so take your deep breaths, calm yourself. The environment that you create around you is something that is going to be transferred to them. And so if you're like, just have this aura of this is fun and exciting, but it's calm, then it might calm them down too. Tip 14. Um, I am the mover and shaker. Okay. Uh, when I am painting a face, I am the artist. And so when I am asking a kid to move, I won't say, Hey, can you look over this way? Or can you move back just a touch? No. Um, they are my canvas. Uh, this sounds terrible. This is again, where I really need to learn how to say this better. But, um, if I want someone to move, even an adult, I will move them. If I want them to move back, I will move them back. And by doing that, it gives the kids, especially the little kids, the sense that this person is in charge and I need to listen and respect to this person because they are doing what needs to be done. Now, again, you can't do that to a normal person in a normal, you know, pay attention to me in this conversation. Like... <laughs> That's going to be a problem. But actually, as a face painter, you are helping them succeed in getting a good face painting. And it is completely okay. As long as you are never moving with force, but you are just giving them instructions, it doesn't have to take a lot of, er, get them. No, 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 no. You are just helping them know where you would like them to be. Tip 15. This is a rule that I have in my booth. You are welcome to have it in yours. And that is that I will paint through wiggles. I will not paint through tears. Um, there is a difference between a kid that is wiggling because they're so excited and a kid that is wiggling because they are being restrained. And that is something that's important to me as someone who respects individuals and their ability to control their own space. If a kid does not want to be painted, I try very, very hard not to paint that kid and be an advocate for them with their parents and just say, hey, look, it looks like they're uncomfortable and I paint through wiggles, not through tears. So let's not make anyone cry or I will start to cry or whatever. Blame it on you. It, you know, do what you got to do, but make sure that um, when the wiggles are from fear, uh, that you're very careful in that situation. All of these tips are great. We got you 15 of them, how to get kids to sit still. But there is one that I want to do that isn't about sitting still. It's about letting wiggles wiggle. And that is there are kids that cannot sit still. Okay. And they may have a disability. It may be that they are just too young. And there is a time and a place for when you do the best you can and you let the wiggles free. Um, and it's important to understand that there are kids that cannot control their wiggles so that you don't take it as a sign that I should have done a better job or whatever. And you help those kids and those parents feel like they were successful. The worst thing that you could do when you're trying to get a kid to sit still is to be like, I'm not going to be able to do a good job if you don't sit still and your painting's going to look really ugly and all these things. And then all of a sudden this kid gets a okay painting but they're like oh my painting's really ugly she said so like no 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 <laughs> um so be aware um especially if you're first starting out that you will have kids that they look seven or eight um that are art autistic um and and just embrace those wiggles embrace that those kids can't sit still another one and this one trips me up often um is there will be a kid that they are big for their age, okay? You'll have a little linebacker <laughs> and they look like they're five. And I, I've been doing this long enough that I kind of have, this is how still a five-year-old should sit and this is how still a six-year-old should sit. But if you have a little, little kid, um, a young kid, I should say, that is big, um, often I will miss a sign how still they should sit. And as they are wiggling and I'm giving them all my tips and cues of like, oh, look over here and help me and do all these cool things. Um, and they're still wiggling, it will stress me out. And so often what I do in this situation is I will say, hey, how old are you? And when I find out, 
oh, you're three. <laughs> you look like you're six, but you're three. Okay, I'm going to adjust my expectations and I'm going to hold you to your age limit wiggle standard <laughs> rather than your size limit. Okay, so go with age. Uh, anyway, so fun to share this coffee chat with you. Um, and uh, let me know if you enjoyed it. And um, I will prepare more for you. See ya. Uh, to finish up, I want to talk to you about some of my wiggles uh, that I noticed because I'm always categorizing everything. So you have hiccup wiggles and those can be really hard. The horse twitch. I don't know how people do this. I can't do this. But if you're painting right here and all of a sudden like just that part of their face twitches, you know, the way a horse moves when it has a fly on it, uh, the horse twitches are crazy. Um, you have the sound in the head turns, you know, there they go. Those ones, that's my black line across the face happens to me all the time. Then you have the anti helping moves when um, you turn them this much and they go whoom and they're like <laughs> are trying to anticipate where do you want me to be this happens more on older kids um, but the anti-helpful moves you have leg swinging um, which turns into leg kicking um, yes I've been kicked I'm sure you have too uh, there's the feeling of the paint that is a wiggle um, anytime the paintbrush touch it you know or if it's a very young kid that eating, you know, you touch their face and they go, ah, because they think it's food. Um, you have the watch your every brush load move. That one drives me crazy too. Um, when, you know, you turn to load your brush and they turn with you, um, you have the shivers. This one, oh, it, it breaks my heart whenever there's a little kid and there was a water attraction and it's kind of windy and they're in my chair and they're sitting there and they're shaking. And it's just like, how much can you do me? Like, I need you to hold still. <laughs> They're wet and cold, you know, so you've got shiver wiggles. Uh, then you have the dancing wiggles. Um, I love when there's live music, but when you've got that six-year-old that's doing a V, you know, it's like, okay, let's have a dance party together when I'm done. Um, then you have the wipe the hair away. Oh, that one's hard too, because often um, they do it when I'm not painting. So I turn and then you get the sweep. And I'm sure you all have those white lines that go from everywhere. You've just added white details. Um, so often I will prep for that one. I will tell them, okay, if your hair gets in your face, let me know and I will move your hair for you. Um, anyway, I'm sure, you know, in the comments, tell me what wiggles you hate uh, because they are, they are categorized in all these different ways. You've got these funny wiggles. And then another one that's really hard is the, the forehead raising up and down when you're trying to do some little detail and whoop, there it goes up again.